Let's cut to the chase. Each section of this video is split into two parts, the process and the debugging. The process tells you what to do, while the debugging tells you how to fix it. Let's jump straight into things. First, go to desktop.app. Then you're going to want to navigate over to releases and then download depending on which operating system you're on. We're on Windows, so we're going to install the Windows installer. We're going to click run, so as soon as this is done, it should pop up and open up desk thing. If during the install you get this pop-up notification, you can just click retry and usually it works. While we wait, we can look at the car thing. Here is the stock car thing and in order to get started we want to unplug this. Then when we want to plug it back in, we want to hold buttons 1 and 4 and of course I did it backwards there at the same time while plugging in the cable. This can be tricky, I found that this grip was the easiest, and as we plug in, we know it worked because the screen shall remain black, just like so. Now, moving back over to Desk we want to go over to the Clients tab up at the top, and then we want to click Add Device. We then want to follow that through with the Flash button, then the Configuration Wizard, and then since we've already completed this step, we can move on to beginning the Flash process. This will take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, so feel free to go get a cup of coffee or do whatever else until this is done. Okay, now that that's done, we need to unplug our car thing and then plug it back in. This is to do the final bit of configuration, which is actually going to be loading this thing onto it. I mean, as you can see as it boots up, it's going to be showing you that it's still running Spotify. That's because that initial flashing step only sets up this mod and doesn't actually implement desk thing. If you wanted to load a glance thing or nocturne, this is where you would then jump off this tutorial and finish theirs. All right, we can now click configure and it should restart and finish configuring desk thing. Uh, if you don't have a client installed, it will also download that. Okay, so if we give it a moment, there we go. We now have desk thing set up. You can click off the video here, but I'm willing to bet you want to do a little bit more. Please go to this timestamp and that's where we're going to go to apps if all of this worked. If something didn't work, then you're going to want to continue watching because I'm going to go through all of the different steps to debug what went wrong. Starting of course with the cable. Now different cables have different levels of reliability, starting with this middle one that is currently using the stock car thing cable. This cable has about a 50-50 reliability and if it disconnects sometimes it might be better to replace it. Um, mine works most of the time but for all intents and purposes it's better to not use. The second car thing is using this larger cable. This is relatively high quality and means that it works almost always. Finally we have this cheap little cable that I just had lying around. This one works for about five minutes and then if I bump the cable or do anything wrong it will disconnect and not connect again. So first thing to check is absolutely your cable because that can have a huge impact on reliability. The second thing to check is the port that it's plugged into. Currently this car thing is not working because it's plugged into a whole daisy chain of different USB connectors. We're going to want to simplify this by plugging the port directly into the back of your computer. Preferably on a USB 2.0 port, but if you only have a 3.0 that is also acceptable. Um, the preferred configuration is a USB A to USB C on the motherboard. The next thing to check is your drivers. Now bear with me because this gets a little bit more technical, but trust me, it's helped a lot of people. You're going to want to open up device manager like we have here and find where it's connected. Uh, you can see here that the device is under libusbk, which is the wrong driver. One thing to add is you only need to do this if it is not correctly burning. You're going to get an error like USB transfer out, or you're going to get an error like bulk mode failed. Something is going to go wrong during the flashing step, and this is when you want to do it. This is not a reliability thing, and these drivers will only show up when you're in burn mode. All right, back to the clip. In order to fix this, we have a couple methods. The first method is via desk thing. So you can hit add device, hit flash, and then click configure driver, and then run this configuration. This will run that script above and it will take just a little bit, and it should refresh and reconfigure that driver to be one that works. If we give it just a moment here, 
All right, it is now finished and we can see in device manager that we are now under the universal serial bus device as GX chip. This is correct, this is good, but this may not always work. The second thing will be using Zadig. It's the exact same uh, process, just a different application. You want to check show all devices and then in the drop down find your device, change this to WinUSB and then click install driver. The download for this will be in the description so you can configure and set that up on your own. Um, now that that's finished, we can see that it is still set correct because we just reinstalled the same driver, but the case has proven that if it is going wrong, that's a second way. The third way is to copy this command and paste it into your terminal and then run that. This is great for like macOS or any other application where you might run into a security issue running this terminal command. This is just an alternative that can also be another way to get this configured. One more note, if none of that works, then you can always join the Discord, it'll be linked down below, and I will be more than happy to help you fix your problem. That brings us to setting up this thing on other devices. First, we're going to show you how to set it up on your phone. You're going to want to navigate over to Add Device, then hit Wi-Fi, and it should bring up a QR code. You can scan this with your phone, and it should connect. One thing to note is to make sure that you're both on the same Wi-Fi connection, as this is working over localhost. A second way is to right click the tray icon and hit open client. This will open it locally on your computer so that you can just kind of have it hanging out on your desktop. There's really only one debugging step for this and that's to make sure both devices are on the same Wi-Fi. If they are not, then it will not work. Of course, you can also make sure that you have a client installed and make sure that desk thing is running, but the biggest thing is to make sure they're on the same Wi-Fi. So now let's talk about configuring this thing on Windows. There's a couple key settings we want to change. First, go to details and then hit configure restart script. And this will make it so that desk thing will automatically restart, especially after restarting your computer. While you're here, you might as well change the brightness as this will prevent the auto brightness from activating, which can be a little jarring sometimes by your desk. Next, there are a couple of settings we want to change. We can hit those by hitting the settings button and then the server button at the top. And then we can enable auto start, enable running in the background, make it so when it starts up, it starts minimized and makes it so it can automatically detect ADB, which is the device, like when it first starts up. We want to hit save and the rest of the settings should be pretty similar. The music settings, we want to enable a refresh interval and this interval can be around 10, 15 seconds. It doesn't really matter. And while you're here, you can check out all of the amazing people who've helped support DeskThing and support me as I develop the software for free for you to use for however long as I can. And if you'd like, you can also help out by clicking the buy me a coffee button at the bottom. Moving on, we can continue with the rest of this walkthrough. If you hit clients and then click mapping, we can see the way to remap the cart thing. Keep in mind, this is still early beta, so there's still a couple bugs that you may encounter here. We have to create a new profile in order to make any edits, so we'll select that, it's automatically activated, and now we can click through all of the buttons and remap them to any other button in the application. So for instance, uh, we can click this face button and we can see what it's currently bound to and see what else we can bind it to. Up at the top here, we have the different modes like the long press, short press, and then on down and on up. This is basically how you want this to be activated and switching between the modes, we can also see what is currently bound to the app at that certain mode. One final thing, if we open up the client just like so, we can move this over to the side and any edits that we make when we save, we should see it reflected on the client live. So if we click mini player here and we select one of the buttons and then say we click that to volume down, the moment we hit save, everything should be reflected immediately. Now, of course, this thing has no bugs. So. Now, of course, this thing has no bugs. So if I click save here, you'll notice it is reflected up there immediately because I am a flawless developer and make mo no mistakes. Yeah, so you can keep on messing around in here, changing all the buttons to anything you desire. And of course, for things like 
volume that has value, you can set what value you want down at the bottom and update it accordingly. In the future, I plan to have profiles that you can edit, as well as mappings that can tie to those profiles and then sharing those profiles, basically a whole bunch of features in the future. But unfortunately, the community has not voted for this, so if you'd like to see those in the next developer cycle, be sure to join the Discord and vote for those next. Okay, that is probably enough messing around in the client mapping. I mean, you can see right now I'm making all of them invisible, so we only just have a couple buttons, but we can probably carry on now. One more quick edit. I forgot to cover tasks, so if you click tasks bottom left, you can now see all of the guides that I have within Deskling for setting up various functions. We'll show you one real quick. If you're wanting to install the client, you can always follow this. Uh, of course, I believe these are a little outdated sometimes. This doesn't use the new flashing method and instead is linking to an old video, but don't worry, that'll be resolved later. So right here, we're just kind of clicking through. If we re refresh the device, it will show up and automatically continue through this step-by-step -step process. And the cool thing about tasks is apps also have tasks that you can complete. So if we give this one just a second to finish, uh, you'll see that I will also be installing the uh, settings test app which is a app that's more primarily to test the functionality of desk thing rather than actually providing any utility. But here, if I download that, you'll see that that will then add a new task. You can see it's beginning to flash right there. And that will give us a guide for setting up a color or setting up a dependent task. Um, what this means is when setting up apps like Spotify or Discord, they should have guides in them in order to help you finish the setup or walk you through what links to click. All right, that's all for this edit. I believe that wraps up just about everything for the navigation, configuration, and setup on the server. So we can carry on to setting up on Mac OS. As you can see, I currently have an older version installed, so I'm going to quickly demonstrate how to update. You need to go to Settings, Server, and then click Check for Updates. It will check real quick if there's anything new, and then automatically install. Once that finishes, you'll be able to click the Install Now button, and that will restart Desk Thing and run the new version. As you can see, we're currently running 11.2, and once this restarts, it will be running the newest 11.12 version. This will take just a moment. And there we go. So there are just a few things different about macOS and the first one is ADB permissions can be a little weird. So you can see here that I'm having the issue where there's a permission problem and I can just run this console command and that will allow ADB to be executed. And to test, we can go to the developer ADB portal and run a few commands and you can see that those are in fact working now. The second difference is that there is a different interaction on macOS. So up at the top, you can right click the icon or at the bottom, you can right click the icon and you can show or hide that tray icon. I know technically macOS specs is that you should always show it, but I personally like being able to hide it occasionally. What you see here is Market Hub, which was made by one of the community members, as well as Light Client, which is the alternative client that I've been developing in the background just as an alternative to the current one. I'll show you how to set that up later. So now that you see how this thing's behaving on macOS, I believe that is the only continuity differences between that and Windows. So we can now move on. Which does unfortunately mean we've made it to the end of the video. Thank you for watching and because YouTube has now decided to start giving me money. You are helping support Desk Thing simply by watching these videos. Later this week, I hope to be posting a video on downloading apps, configuring apps like Discord or Spotify, as well as hopefully developing your own apps. So please subscribe, stay tuned, and stick around as I should be posting that shortly. Bye.